welcome back to The Watch. And the hypocrisy of the uh, woke activists seems to just have no end. Nathan? Uh, they really don't. Especially <laughs> when it comes to journalism. They really love to, even when you think it's kind of all over, they've done the damage, people have called them out for it. They always come back for a second round. Exactly. And it really goes to show that they're activists. They're not after truth. And they will use any, like, logical justification, even if it actively contradicts other justifications that they use in reverse, right? They will happily jump on that uh, in the now if it serves their ends. Because at the end of the day, it's not about principles. It's not about right or wrong for them. It's about power and winning. They just want to win by any means necessary because to them, the ends justify the means. And so uh, there has been a constant attack, we've covered this on Night's Watch, about uh, the male gaze, you know, meaning that uh, they find it objectifies women when men are attracted to pretty women, or women are presented in an overly attractive well, section. Recently we've had stuff like with Pokemon Go, the update where they just completely removed female figure for the game entirely. We will be covering that in its own video, trust me. But like, they just keep coming back to it where it isn't even now about appreciating women, it's now just about removing them entirely from any form of digital media. Which seems horribly sexist. Yeah. Okay, where they're actively trying to make women not look like women. Pokemon Go is just the more most recent in a long running, you know, track record of evidence of activists, the woke mob, trying to make women look more like men. Mm, and I think it shows a lack of understanding from them because they think basically only straight white men play video games. Mm -hmm. And so we remove all these things that they like from the games, but it's actually taking away choices from other players like women who would probably want those features and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, request them now because they've been taken away from them. But now they've flip-flopped on it now in this exactly. article. Exactly, because all their standard about, you know, over-sexualization bad, male gaze bad, objectification of women bad, is suddenly thrown aside and pushed under the rung, rug, I mean, if it's done by an ally. If it's someone that pushes the same message, mm. right, then they're fully on board with it. In actual fact, it's the right type of sexualization, as this article in Kotaku says, it's the kind of hot they need right now. And I find this is very telling because it also falls directly in line with the type of sexualization they love to promote, mm. which is basically anything outside of the normal sexual relation traditional mm. type of, you know, relationship between men and women. They sung the praises of Baldur's Gate 3 because you could do some really weird things in it. You could have sex with a bear in it. And they thought, that is great. So whoever thinks that is just insane. I mean, you know, sexualization of women, bad. But if it's a man dressed up as a woman in a really sexually provocative way, they will sing the praises for it. Sexualization is bad. Ah, but if it's an OnlyFans model, okay, right? Oh, that's so good, right? We live in a mad world. <laughs> it's, it's a upside down world where they are blatant hypocrites. These so-called feminists, right, are just black and white, undeniable hypocrites. Okay, and so this article comes from the uh, you can't be racist to white people, men are the enemies. She literally has a tattoo of men are the enemies. So she is a blatant sexist and racist, right? Alyssa McCante coming to us from it. And by the way, like she is only after trying to destroy wholesome values, basically. Yeah. She celebrates triggering people and trying to uh, push the agenda, mm. okay? She likes being hated for it because that's, I guess, the only way you could... Co you either have to confront yourself with some pretty difficult truths about how much of a decent person you really are mm. or just throw standards out the window and laugh along, you know, the journey while you try and burn everything down. 
And so this is coming from her. Now, you've already had a sneak peek into this article. Oh, I read through this because I thought, you know, we're going to have a discussion about it. Maybe I should prepare myself for some of the things that she's going to say. And, man, the way that she just grapples onto anything that can make her statement more factual is insane. Like you said before, the standards and how she throws them out the window, that's basically this article. Because mm -hmm. what she's doing is she's said previously, you know, and she makes example to um, Stella Blade and how, you know, that is void of any characterization. It's over sexualization. It's bad because you can't connect with the character and all this other junk. And then she basically flips on its head in this article saying, well, yes, I said that, but, <laughs> but I also think the same thing as you all lot, but this game, because I like this when I have friends at work here. So that's the key, right? So... Hades 2 is a game that is going to be coming out. And I've heard a good report of Hades 1. Yes. Now, knowing that it has had consulting companies help it out, I will never give a second look to Hades 1 or 2 because zero tolerance on this crap now. They have the DEI, um, or is it DIE, whatever it is, or the reframing of it called Bridge. Uh, I, so okay. they just pivot and rename stuff and they want to push the agenda that they're pushing continually but trying to hide it from people and so that's what i said you know that they'll be doing when they were getting called out with gaming gate 2 sweet baby inc is that they will just keep doing rename what they're doing and keep trying to consult behind the scenes mm. but you can't hide certain things no. for instance mannish looking women that are made intentionally ugly you can't hide that guys have a radar for it because most guys aren't attracted to men i mean just most humans have a different we're not stupid yes. i like to think most of us yeah absolutely so this is a either promotional image uh, but it's from uh, aphrodite uh, aphrodite whatever in the hades 2 game it's rather sexualized. It is. In actual fact, I'd say this is more sexualized than Stella Blade. I would agree. You would agree? Uh, mm. I mean, at this point, we're, we're, we're comparing sexy and sexy. Like, it's, it's getting a bit blurry here. Well, now. Uh, sexualized, definitely. Yeah. I don't think this is sexy. Um, I mean, you see lots of curves. Yeah, but but like uh, in terms of the head to body ratio, she's obviously too tall, um, and I, she has a bit of a masculine jaw, and uh, and uh, just a couple of like things because the uh, character design, right? Remember how I said you can pick up certain things? Mm -hmm. It's a bit more blatant when you see some of the other character designs for Hades 2, where you can really tell the uh, Sweet Baby Ink-esque uh, consultancy happening. So here's another image. And there is, looks to be, front and centre, an overweight, amputee, wheelchair-bound god character. Person of colour. <laughs> So hang on, amputee, wheelchair bound, fat uh, All representation, yeah. person of color. That's four right there. Uh, the character to the side, uh, those are very masculine arms. Yes, this is true, mm -hmm. but it depends on, I mean, you can take some liberty with characters. I, I think and if this came out maybe 10 years ago, we wouldn't look at it as much. I think people would ha ha raise an eyebrow I've at the some MC, um, character. And I actually think that's based on, because I saw someone commenting on this, and that character I think is supposed to be based off of a, a Greek mytho mythology. Yeah, they're all Greek gods. Yeah. And does not look like that person, let's just say. Yes, well, <laughs> interpretation, sure, that could be the defense for this. I think where it becomes more severe is when she tries to defend herself within the article. Which is interesting because she is aware of the blatant hypocrisy then. Yeah. And then she's just trying to deflect and say, oh, but I, but this is okay because it's the, it's the right type of hot. Meaning... Literally you, says that. You need approval from people like her to be uh, allowed to find something attractive or not. Mm. Without their approval, okay, you're problematic. Do you reckon she's also trying to cope in the sense that maybe not everyone will be attracted to this or might not be a thing? Because for me, for example, I have played a bit of the first Hades games. I know people love the gameplay, but a lot of people were thirsting over the characters in the first one. I personally am not someone who thirsts over 
cartoon characters. I know I'm a minority in terms of the internet, okay? <laughs> you all love to do that. Yeah. But, like, I, I know there's people who love visual novels and watch and play that sort of stuff. I don't see as much of a interest for me. Mm. So for me, at least coming to the sequel, they kind of obviously go in the same direction they were in the first one, but they've made a very hard left turn, quite literally, in terms of the direction they're going. Yeah, and this when a company does this and just jumps on the bad wagon to support the whole DEI woke agenda, right? That says a lot of things right there. Basically, fundamentally, it means they hate most gamers. They hate most men for liking and being attracted to attractive women, okay? If you hold many conservative or traditional values, not even just conservative, just run a mill traditional thing, uh, you're an evil bad person. If you object to the over-sexualization of children's media, you're a terrible person, right? That, they think that, right? Mm. And when they get on board with stuff like that, that's the message they're saying. Hence, zero tolerance. They do not deserve your money at all. And there's a lot of good games. Just ignore them. Move on to the next one. So let's have a look at some of the uh, things in this article. Hades, Supergiant Games, award-winning blah, 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 was renowned for its excellent combat, beautiful art style, addition music, and very, very hot characters. You'd expect a game about Greek gods who were purposefully attractive so the normies of ancient Greeks had something to aspire towards. I don't think that's an accurate uh, interpretation of the Greek gods in terms of their intention. No, but it's just funny because she's using some of the same things that other people have used her in terms of attractiveness. I know. We, why, why do you think people are attractive? Well, so we can aspire to it. So she just take that. Wasn't Eve in Stellar Blade engineered to look that way? I don't know the backstory, but I think, you know, she, there are some genetics happening. Potentially, yeah. Okay, um, but Hades managed to exceed expectations, and from what we've seen of the Hades 2 technical test and Super Giant's Laser Game, it looks like the sequel will be even hotter. Take that, cancel pigs. You're the cancel pig. I was going to say, like, I no mean, one was cancelling this game. I think everyone was excited for this sequel. Yeah, and <laughs> even though I'm saying don't give them your money, I'm not saying cancel in the sense that, you know, have the publisher blacklist it or blacklist it off Steam, the type of stuff that the work activists do. Mm. I'm We're just saying... going to dox them or yeah, anything. I'm saying this company does not deserve your money by the... Uh, ideology that is now supporting it most likely hates you most gamers okay that just like hot characters in games the next one she says as well is despite the certain corners of the internet might believe there isn't a lack of attractive people in modern video games <laughs> and then <laughs> references wouldn't you know Baldur's gate 3 hang on hang on okay Baldur's gate 3 right some of the characters were barely attractive. Mm -hmm. They went out of their way to try and normalize the appearance, and there are a lot of mods doing what? Improving. Making the, the characters yeah, yeah. more attractive. And in actual fact, there are heaps of like custom faces that you can download for Baldur's Gate 3 in mods, and then you can go to these characters in game and change the faces. You wanna know what I did to basically every single NPC in the game. Did you just change all their faces? Change their faces, made yeah. them look better, made them look more appealing, and uh, they just look better as a result. Shadowheart is really average in terms of her base appearance, and in actual fact, they go out of their way to make um, the masculine, uh, that there is a more, um, uh, I guess, stronger body type for both men and women, but they make the female strong body type really masculine, like too masculine or like boyish masculine type things, all right? So... But again, remember because it, it their Baldur's Gate was basically um, nodding to the activists by doing stuff like that. It gets a pass. It does, right? But if it had characters like Stella Blade, do you think they'd be saying the same thing? Well, I don't know because she says here that the game's full of hotties. But when compared to something like Stella Blade's Eve, the standard uh, the standard bearer for the latest game, A Culture War, the manner in which Hades depicts its characters and their attractiveness is fundamentally different. Are you a bit confused after I reading am, that? I am a yeah, bit I think she's putting in some word salad to make you feel yeah, more confused. Because, like, in terms of body proportions from the Aphrodite character, uh, I, I'm seeing similar curve style to Eve, even though because the head is too small and the face, there are masculine elements to it. But overall, that's a more feminized, curvy 
shape that's in line with Stellar Blade's one. I'm more confused with the fact that you're seeing all these attractive people and you call out mm. Stellar Blade for not being as attractive, but these cartoons and this fantasy, that's like, it's very pick and choosy here. Yeah. You're not giving me much of a defense as to why Stellar Blade doesn't have the same good or bad things, depending on how you're looking at attractiveness. But also these other characters, the fat guy in the wheelchair. That's an unattractive character. That's a hottie, no. Should I, uh, what about this watch masculine? They are all friggin- hotties. No, it's ugly as hell, that one. It's like... I'm just playing devil's ba- advocate here because I don't... Oh, to, uh, to people who want to promote anything outside the normal kind of sexual relation, all right? Well, yeah, you know, a, a woman that looks very masculine and with big male-looking arms and everything... That's the type you need to be attracted to that because you're an ally then. Hades characters' sexiness is woven into their personalities. But not not Eve. Not Eve. Eve has no personality. No, she's not even human. <laughs> Gosh. And it just woven into the personality, even the way Eve moves is to convey attractiveness. The yes. poses I, I get there is attractiveness woven to even the movement of her character. That's a very I would say ingrained into the personality of the character. Yes, but then she continues this as as much uh, a part of them as their wants, needs, and emotions, and their bodies, however scantily clad and... Or salacious. Or salacious, (laughs) are not in motion. They cannot be manipulated or posed or peered at from different angles. (laughs) Instead... (laughs) It's like you're looking at statues or paintings of these gods and their eternal, infinite sexiness. <laughs> there is a desire here, sure, but there's also a power and reclamation. There is a there is a longing because you've only got a tiny little taste of their beauty. The concept of look but don't touch is incredibly sexy. It's part of why strip clubs, many of which have strict rules of touching uh, the performers, are so lucrative. Holy crap, the amount of cope and just bullcrap, that true retardation she's going to to justify promoting one while not the other is insane. So because Hades is 2D pictures that you can't move the camera around, that makes it sexier, where Eve, you know, you can third person, so therefore not as attractive, and then she compares it to a strip club. Also, the whole, you know, it's bad to have a f- attractive character with a movable camera by her standard, okay? Because a fictional character that is not real, you should n- get her consent to manipulate the camera around to view certain angles. It seems like that's what she's saying. <sighs> I'm just thinking of things like, you know, 2D pictures a lot more easier to... uh do fan out of than straight in one or so like it's true. If people want this sort of stuff, they will find it on the internet. And it's funny because she's obviously referring to the um, uh, clips of people playing Stellar Blade, and there was one hilarious one of a guy who was just playing it, and it gets to the um, uh, climbing down the ladder animation. Mm-hmm. But actually, well, that caught his attention, and then the climbing up animation, and he just like he he frees like. Mm. Okay, like, it was hilarious. But then they just say that, like, Eve uh, in Stellar Blade uh, is hot, but she doesn't seem to be aware of it. She's sexy, but doesn't know it. She's athletic. Like, this goes on to say, because she doesn't know it. What crap is this? Therefore, not attractive. (laughs) Alrighty then. (laughs) Sure. That's actually kind of a trope, though. Like, the um, nerdy girl, you know, trope who is not as aware of how cute she is kind of thing, and uh, and it's used in media sometimes as, as like, a, 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 you know, because there is t- a type of characterization of an attractive character, because they're not aware of it, then they're not narcissistic about it, and that can be seen as a positive attribute as a result, right? Mm-hmm. But she's trying to paint it as a wholly negative because she's seemingly unaware of how attractive she is. This is nonsense. It just shows her perspective too, because she, she says, unlike Bayonetta, whose sexiness is folded into her personality and fighting style, Eve is just blandly attractive. Eve is the object of desire, not the owner of it. Like, you're just denigrating Eve now as a... 
I'm sorry, we have a demo and stuff. The game's come out now, hasn't it? it of of Solar Blade. Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I'm, uh, I review the combat on, on Shadowversity of Solar Blade. It and just two things do happen to stand out in that review. I just say, dude. Yeah. It just feels like to me, her value of attractiveness is how invested and personally attracted she is to it. Because there could be a person who plays Cell Blade and go, you know what, I've really connected with Eve as a character. There could be elements that the player finds relatable, and therefore, does that make it more attractive to them? But then she's saying now, because she doesn't see the same connection she had with Bayonetta... Yeah, like, it's subjective gobbledygook nonsense. Like what she's saying about Bayonetta, whose sexiness has folded into her personality and fighting style. I was literally just talking about that they pick certain movements and combat animations that reflect Eve's sexiness, right? Mm. And especially idle animations and combat animations where she poses in a certain way, specifically made to reflect a sexy kind of position, right? Yeah. And so the standard that she's now trying to gaslight, that, oh, Bayonetta has this and Stella Blade doesn't, is bullcrap. Like, I reviewed the combat in, on Shadowversity and literally point out those stances because they're not wholly practical from a combat point, but there's a reason why they picked it, mm. right? And so now she's it's just bullcrap. Blatant gaslighting trying to say, oh, Bayonetta good. And by the way, the feminists, people like her, they did not like Bayonetta when it came no. out. They tried to rake it across the coals just like they did with Stella Blade being the sexist, misogynistic male gaze thing, right? And they did it with Bayonetta, and uh, what was the other one that was? Oh yeah, um, Nia Automata, yeah. right? Um, both of those games. And then after the fact, now they want to pretend, oh no, it's great. And it's funny why they try and uh, are now trying to support it, because they also want to co-op the characters as being on board with the message and mm. the ally, where Bayonetta, she's gay, don't you know? Even though she did have a daughter. And in a relationship with a man. But but but, but no. somehow. <laughs> right, right. And so they love to try and co-op things to uh, try and interpret and tell them it's really gay. Just like they do with Lord of the Rings. And by the way, they literally have like, like articles writing about Sauron being gay and other things like that, right? Because they want to co-opt and reframe reality to reflect their agenda mm -hmm. and promote their agenda. That's why they're doing it. They want to promote it and push it everywhere. Because Tolerance and acceptance isn't enough, okay? You need to actually promote it, okay, and celebrate it. And if you don't promote or celebrate it, you're a homophobe or bigot or a transphobe or any of that stuff. And so do you see how all the things I was saying is present in this article? Yeah. All right? And again, the blatant hypocrisy. You can just tell that she is making up gobbledygook bullcrap to try and justify support of a game that is supported by allies, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. or other consultancy companies, Acer, you know, that game, and so therefore she will blatantly contradict other standards and accept, oh, this is, this is the right type of sexiness for all these nonsense reasons, actual nonsense reasons, what she's trying to spit right mm. here. In Hades 2, everyone is horny for each other, and thus it feels far less leery and creepy for us as players to be horny for them too. It is nonsense. Basically, the characters are promiscuous, and they believe in, like, unmarital, you know, either, well, also non-traditional sex, so therefore, I'm on board with it. It's A-OK. -okay. Yep. And... Basically, this is this is bizarre. It is creepy in her mind for anyone to be attracted to a character in a game if there are no other characters in the game horny for those other characters in the game. That is weird. Again, it, it's all like you're not allowed to be attracted to people without their approval. Okay, you need to make sure it ticks all the boxes. And even if it's you know similar standards, you know curvy women, curvy woman. No, 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 no. This one. Uh, I, it, again, the reason why this is okay is because it's from someone they perceive as an ally. That's the reason why it's okay. And then they're just making up bullcrap to try and justify it, latching onto whatever thin vein of logic that they can find. Because that is nonsense. There are sexual people, gods, who are infamous for their rampant and often unchecked desires. Aphrodite, goddess of sexual love and beauty, would be naked... Would, would be naked, and her pink hair down to her buttocks, right? And the wry smile and everything. Again, this is just to try and justify the fact that Aphrodite is 
restrict it. Like, there are reasons that explain why 2B is the way she is in New Automata. Same with Eve, I'd say, in Stellar Blade. So it's the next comic kind of got me with it's like, but while Aphrodite embodies a more traditional idea of sexiness, which by the way is subjective, <laughs> look at how many of us are thirsting for Walter Greggan's The Noseless Goal in the Fallout TV show. Oh, what? <laughs> Friggin' what? <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? I have had multiple <laughs> discussions on Fallout, the TV series. And no multiple one's mentioned people. that? Oh. I've been seeing a lot of comments online about it. Not a single person mentioned that they were thirsty after a freakish looking ghoul. Oh, do you see what I mean about any type of abnormal, different, you know, yeah. attractiveness or sexuality they want to push? Holy crap. S try to sexualize a mutated ghoul and then try to say everyone's thirsty for where did that come from? See what I mean? Like out of place stuff where you just go, okay, but oh, just step back a bit and we'll talk about who finds this attractive? Oh. How? <sighs> but yeah, she basically goes on to say how great it is, mentions Baldur's Gate 3 again, you know, as the one example. Um, again, Baldur's Gate 3, they, like, they try to say, oh, see, we're okay with sexy... No, 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 they, they actually toned it back. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3 characters have similarities to ty the types of characters in uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, where they, like, some are looking somewhat androgynous or a bit more manly, and they actively go away from the more stylized, traditional feminine beauty that you... Stellar Blade kind of shows. Like, seriously, have a look at Stellar Blade, the figure and the face, mm -hmm. and compare it to the characters in Baldur's Gate. You will notice a distinct difference. And not just Eve, all the female characters in Stellar Blade, seemingly, right? Yep. Um, even go back in time a bit to Lara Croft and everything when Western game media actually wasn't afraid of having good-looking women, right? Compare that to Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate is distinctly uglified, but not so far to be a, a full slap in your face like we've seen more blatant examples from Mary Jane and Spider-Man or the Fable character or uh, Mortal Kombat, Pokemon Go. The, the list just keeps going on and on. Mm. Mm. But it's funny because at the end of this article, I love it when article places have uh, comment sections. <laughs> because we do have, I don't think it's on this one, it's on the Australian one, and people are just calling her out. There is no, I think there's one person that's supporting her, and then like five comments that say, shut up. Yep. Okay, this is absolute garbage. So it's good to know the gamers aren't reading these articles anymore, or whatever it were really, and believing them. Because yeah. if you read that, I w like if I read that in my own time, I would have just gone, what a waste. I have no idea what I just read. That was just word salad. And the way that they debate and try to subjectify truth, basically, mm -hmm. it just shows how much they how much they depend on people not understanding or comprehending or being confused. Yes, they exactly. You 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 hit exactly where I was what I was gonna mention. They rely on people being confused. They actually go out of their way to try and muddy mm. the logic and the argumentation with such gobbledygook nonsense word salad here yeah. to confuse the issue while trying to have the veneer of a logical through line to make people who aren't really paying attention just think like, oh, I guess it makes sense. When if you break it down, no, no, what they're saying is nonsense, mm. okay? It is pseudo-intellectual bullcrap. It is pretending, because it's not intelligent, but they're pretending to be intelligent, right? It's the type of writing that we saw in Rings of Power where they tried to flower it up with the same tone kind of structure to make it sound Tolkienian, mm. but the actual meaning of the words was nonsense. Yeah. Do you know why a boat floats and a rock oh, sinks? Started. The boat looks up and the rock looks down. It's so, so just retarded nonsense, right? That's what we're getting here. Like, Oh, the characters are thirsty for each other, and that makes it okay for people in the real world to be thirsty, thirsty for them. Yeah. Just, that, what a retarded thing to say. And everyone's attractive for this one IP, which we don't like because they're the enemy, and it's for white men, but everything else yeah. is okay to be sexy. Be like, for me, it's like, okay, I think they're all a bit over-sexualized. Mm -hmm. Keep it that standard. Don't pick and choose what you want and don't want. Sure, there's opinions of what people are attracted to, but in terms of sexualization, it's kind of all a bit too... Mm -hmm much. So just stick with that. 
also, even in this, uh, this person's own article, right? Blatant contradiction completely. Because she proposes a standard that if characters within a story are thirsting one another, that makes it okay for people outside of the story to thirst after them. And then she celebrates people thirsting, which is out of the blue for me, um, the Fallout character, right? No one is thirsting after him in the show. Also, that is a 2D image, which you cannot... Oh, oh um, so, yeah. yeah. But, but Double I'm sure... standards, you know. I'm sure there is enough camera angles that people could pause and find the angle that they want if they're really thirsty. You wouldn't but, see anything, but, though, because it's a ghoul. I know, it's a freaking ghoul. They fell off. But by a standard, no one is thirsting after the ghoul in the show, so doesn't that make it wrong then for people outside? But then she's celebrating. Do you, do you see the hypocrisy double standard bullcrap mm -hmm. that they try and push just to justify the fact that this is made by an ally and also that they are hypocrites from the get-go. The whole, it's wrong, male gaze, over-sexualization woman. This is coming from a lady who was a former cam girl or whatever she was, yeah. right? An OnlyFans whatever whore, okay? And, and by the way, yes, that's what OnlyFans models are. Whores, okay? And she has the goal to try and say, oh, male gaze wrong, when she's happy to try and profit off it, by the way, I don't think she would have made a lot of money off her. She is... Okay. Um, she is just a repulsive person. Like, just in personality-wise. It's like everything she says. Um, and she's also, remember, a blatant racist and sexist. You can't be racist towards white people, which is her just justifying her racism to white people. Okay? She wouldn't need to say it if she wasn't racist to white people. Funnily that. that. And she has a tattoo saying, Men are the enemies. I think she's... She has to talk about the politics and about all this sort of stuff because any other journalist would say, I played an early tech demo of this game. The characters are sexy like the last one. The gameplay is good, this and that. But then she has to bring in uh, Stella Blade from the uh, Gamergate 2 and uh, Baldur's Gate, which is a great... Like She has to pull in all of the resources that she's already... Because now she's popular for this. People know her for being part mm -hmm. of the whole Gamergate 2 thing. And, she and so now she can't pull from anything else that's actually talent or... Or skill. Mm. And she knows she's being a hypocrite, so she was trying to deflect from it because she did attack Stella Blade of being so horribly mis misogynist, you know, made for the male gaze, coming from an OnlyFans lady, right? Piss off, you friggin' hypocrite. Like, for a game about Hades 2, you're talking about Stella Blade and mm. Baldur's Gate and Bayonetta and nothing about the actual game. Yeah. So it just shows that, okay, you don't care about this game, actually, you just care about the message that it's sending. This is just game journalists in a, in a nutshell. Mm. Like, I'm not actually playing the game, trying to politicize it constantly. Kotaku is a complete piece of trash website, right? And uh, they just are trying to profiteer off of, uh, you know, trying to cause division and stuff. And we'll call them out and we'll actually <laughs> profit off of their stupidity. And by calling it out, right, it lets people know, you know, if anyone was interested in Hades, this is the type of stuff you'll be supporting. Stay on watch.